Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hello, Facebook world. Hello, Palestine United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Maurice McIntosh. I'm coming to you from the big city of Nellerton, Mississippi this morning. Amen. And, and believe me, there is a word from the Lord. Amen. You have to look over my mistakes this morning because this is my first time doing this. But we're going to get the word of God out there any way it's possible. Amen. Amen. And, and during these last uh, trying days, few days, COVID-19 has gotten all our attention. Uh, I want to tell the Facebook world and my Palestine United Methodist Church family and the in the church family as a whole, don't believe everything that you hear. Let me say it again. Don't believe everything that you hear. The Bible says in Proverbs 14 and 15, the gullible believe anything they're told, and the prudent sift and weigh every word. Look, not everybody who speak on the internet not everybody who's on social media, not everybody who's on the TV, on the radio knows what they are talking about. Not everybody who's talking about COVID-19 is worth listening to. Quit listening to everything that you hear about COVID-19. And when you listen, you need to be selective, saints of God. Many people will take advantage of this crisis and, and use it for their own agenda. Yeah, they will try to use these uncertain days for their own gains. And the Bible says in Proverbs 14 and 8, the wise man looks ahead. The fool attempts to fool himself and won't face the facts. We must face the facts. We are in the last days. The Bible repeatedly says that especially in a crisis, you should always base your decisions and actions on the facts, not statistics that some anybody will tell you on TV or radio or on Facebook. God has given us everything that we need, saints. He has given us what we need to be wise and prudent in this crisis. Yes, COVID-19 is real. But I tell you what, my God is real also. Yes, he is. You can test everything against his word, and you can have confidence that his word will always guide you to a way of wisdom. As a follower of Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit to give us discernment. And, and we got to have good sense, y'all. God gave us sense. Amen. He said he would be with us in the midst of danger. He didn't tell us to go out and put ourselves in danger. He would never leave us nor forsake us, but use good sense. As disciples of Jesus, we should not just be people of faith. We should be people of facts. It's a lot of news going on. CNN, uh, Fox News. WTVA, WCBI, all the other local news in the places all over the United States of America. But today, yes, today, I have some good news. With that being said, would you pray with me right now? Let us pray. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Father, we thank you that you have given angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. We are led in the right path, for your spirit gives us light and your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. We put all our trust in you this morning. We know that you will not fail us. You will not leave us alone. You will not suffer, let your children suffer. Father God, right now, we know that no weapon formed against us shall profit. It shall not meet with any success. We thank you, Lord, that we have a greater one living on the inside of us. We fear no man. We fear no virus. We fear no thing. 
We have the spirit of love and power in a sound man. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us strong. Thank you for keeping us inspired. Thank you for keeping us on the right path. Thank you, Lord, that when we stumble, you lift us right back up. What a mighty God we serve. If I could get men on Facebook, men in Palestine, men and women all over the world to praise him right now, thanking him for his goodness and for his wonderful works to us, children of men. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. We praise you, O oh God. We lift up these holy hands. We lift them up without doubt. We lift them up without fear. We hear the words of the psalm and say, oh, magnify the Lord with me and give him the honor to do his name. For at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the honor and the glory of God the Father. Right now, Father, all the names that's on our different sick and shut in and prayer lists, right now, Father, in all the hospitals, all the Health, nursing home, health care facilities. Lord, wherever your word is needed right now, Lord, we standing in the gap right now for those who, who are calling your name. Right now, Lord, not only do you hear our prayer, Lord, we know that you would answer our prayer. Lord, we stand in agreement with them all right now that whatever they ask, it is given to them in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you that you go before us, level our mountains, and make our crooked places straight. Praise God. We know that nothing is too hard for you. You are a God that can be everywhere at the same time. And right now we are believing and praying that this COVID-19 virus is already defeated right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Once again, we welcome you to this live service. We're not going to be very long. But there is a word from God. Amen. I, I want to thank my son in the ministry, Brother Joseph Ivy, who has taken time out of his schedule to come and help an old man out doing this. Right now, we're thanking God that God has already went before us, and he is already blessing us. And as I was saying before, there is something about the news. We have have just gotten ourselves so in an uproar about the different news that we're listening to. And I want you to know today that I have some news for you. And I have some news for you that you can't say it's fake news, it's not Fox News, it's not WTVA News, it's not WCBI, it's not no local news, but it's called the good news. And it's coming directly from our Lord and Savior, and it's found in our B-I-B-L-E, the Bible. With that being said, would you please turn with me to 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, verses 5, the fifth chapter, verses 9 through 10. 9 through 10. I will be reading out of the New International Version of the Bible this morning. Amen. Listen to the word of the Lord. And it says, For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. I want to throw verse 11 in there because I want you to keep that this thought here. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. Amen. Amen. I want to speak just for a moment. God has not destined us for wrath, but for salvation. Yes, we know God is a God of love. Uh, coming up as a child, we all sung that old familiar song, Yes, Jesus loves me. Jesus is love. And we all have grown up to know that Jesus is love. But God also is a God of wrath. But I have some good news for you today. The good news is that 
God has not destined us for wrath. God has destined us believers, the saint of God, saints of God, for salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. And getting to this destination that God has prepared for us, he prepared it through the foundation of the earth before. And it is only attainable through Jesus Christ. There is no way around it, saints of God. It is through Jesus Christ alone where salvation is obtained. You can't get it nowhere else. Acts 4 and 12 tells us the day of salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. Jesus is it. The Apostle Paul here says in this text that we receive salvation, life everlasting, through Jesus Christ who died for us. Yes, it is Jesus who died on our behalf. It is Jesus who died in our place. Neither one, none of us has gotten what we deserve. It is Jesus who took the penalty for our sin. He endured the wrath that you and I deserve. God does has a wrath, y'all. When Jesus died and shed his blood on Calvary, the sting of death was destroyed. We was given the opportunity for a new life in him. Jesus made an exchange that day. He made an exchange with us that caused all who would believe to be transitioned from, from death to life. God has a wrath, church. But we, the saints of God, has not been, has not been destined for wrath. What will you this morning do with the invitation called salvation? What will you do with it? God is standing with his arm wide open. He's waiting on you and he's waiting on me. COVID-19 has gotten not just the United States' attention. We have come together internationally now, knowing that this COVID-19 virus is not something that to play with. We must take it serious, church. And if we're not careful, not only have it shut down our government, if we don't do as the word said, it will literally shut down our churches. But glory be to God. We thank you for technology. We thank you for Facebook Live. We thank you for Zoom. We thank you for all the other telecommunication ways that we are, are communicating now. We also thank God that we're able to sit down again as a family. I want you to know in all that God has done in making salvation available to us men, oh, unfortunately, many are still refusing. Many are still not giving God the glory that he deserves. And I want you to know, believe it or not, the only hope for all of us is in Christ. Now is the time to turn to him. Now is the time to call upon him while he is near. We all have been destined for greatness and eternal purpose by God. Satan has destined us for wrath he has destined us for eternal separ separation from God through all his works in darkness. And he has convinced some of us to continue that way. And we do it through sin. He wants you to stay the way that you are. He wants to convince you that this is your life destiny and you can live it as you please. But I thank God 
that he has given us another opportunity this morning. I thank God that he has given us no fake news, no CEN news, but he has given us the good news. Jesus gives us the plan Satan has for our life already in his word. Listen to John 10 and 10. The thief come not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's Satan, y'all. Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and have life more abundantly. Oh, the horror this morning of not accepting Jesus' free gift of salvation. It's worse than a coronavirus, y'all. Can you imagine the world ending today and Jesus standing there telling you to depart from me for I know you not. When he returned, all who has accepted him will return with him. Scripture says that the dead in Christ shall rise first and all of us that are left behind will be caught up to meet him. Where will you stand today, church? Will you stand in a place of separation? Who will you blame? On that day. Who will you rejoice and give thanks to on that day? Today I have come to you with some good news. You have been given the knowledge of the truth. I don't sugarcoat it. Today is a day of decision. And what you choose is left up to you. God has already done his part. He done his part by making his will and his purpose known to us in our life. He calls us out of the works of darkness into his marvelous light. And he does that through Jesus Christ. The good news on the day today is that Jesus has already spoken for us. If you go back and read in John, the ninth chapter, round verse 41, you'll find these words. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. If you have been born again, saved by grace through faith, you have escaped the terrible day of wrath that is sure to come for all who reject God's son. It is God's will that none of us should perish, that all of us should come to repentance. I plead with you this morning to come right now. Come to Jesus. Come just as you are. You may be broken right now. You may be sick right now. You may be sin sick in your soul right now. But listen to me well. Jesus will forgive you. He's standing with his arm wide open. And he said, come my child. I've been waiting on you. Jesus Christ is waiting. There is nothing more worse than not knowing Jesus in the pardon of your sin. It's worse than coronavirus, yeah. As I close today, I want you to know that all you have to do is repent. If you don't know Jesus or if you want to, to come back and get your life back in order, this is all you got to do. All you got to do is pray with me, Lord Jesus. Forgive me of all my sins. I come to you right now as humble as I know how. Lord, clean me up, Lord, clean me up, Lord, clean me up and use me in the upbuilding of your kingdom. Now, if you, if you can say that prayer honestly with me, and, and, and you have said that prayer, 
God has forgiven you. You can right now enter into the kingdom of heaven. All you got to do is find you a, a Bible-believing church. All you got to do right now is, is walk in the way that the Spirit is leading you and believe that God has saved you. Believe that Jesus died for you personally and continue to form that relationship with God and you will not be destined for no wrath of God. I have good news. Jesus saves us all. Thank you for listening this morning. I thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. I thank God for Jesus this morning because I know that without him, we all wouldn't have a chance. But with him, all things are possible. Coronavirus is defeated. All anything that's trying to come against you right now is defeated. What we need to do at the end, I told you as I close out, Verse 11 in 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, said, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up. There is no time for us to be tearing one another down. There is no time to be putting this all on pastor and evangelist and on missionary. It's time for each one of us to be the mouthpiece of God. And as the days go forward one night, from now, use social media, use the phone, and you spread the good news. Thank you. And may God bless you, and may God keep you. Continue to watch, continue to wait, and we will be back with other messages from God. May God bless you, and may God keep you.